sure there are Disneyland attractions we all miss. But what about the food? Here are the stories of the defunct Disneyland eateries that we all miss. The most unusual food location by far at Disneyland was Catfish Cove on Tom Sawyer Island in the late 1950s. Guests were provided bamboo fishing poles and worms for bait to try their luck fishing off the side of a pier where catfish, perch, and bluegill were stocked in a sectioned off area of the rivers of America. These were real fish. And if you caught one, you got to take your catch home. Nearby Aunt Jemima Pancake House, now known as Riverbell Terrace, put your catch on ice until your Disneyland day was done. One problem, fish carcasses would surface now and then throughout the park. Custodians had bigger fish to fry and to keep the park from smelling like dead fish. So after a few years, Tom Sawyer Island discontinued all fishing at Catfish Cove. Now let's move on to food locations where you actually get to eat your food on premises. My personal favorite, Tahitian Terrace, where Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe sits today, used to be a buffeteria called Plaza Pavilion, an opening day restaurant that straddled two lands, Main Street and Adventureland. Guests would enter through Main Street, select and pay for their food, and then take their meals to a terrace in Adventureland overlooking the Jungle Cruise. Then plans were made to divide up the Plaza Pavilion into three separate restaurants. One on Main Street, which kept the name Plaza Pavilion, and two in Adventureland, one of which was the Enchanted Tiki Room. Not the attraction version we all know and love, but a restaurant. Yes, the Tiki Birds were going to put on a dinner show above you. However, due to concerns over capacity, the restaurant plans were eventually abandoned in favor of an attraction. Plus, does anyone really want a chance eating directly below a bunch of birds? But notice that still to this day, the Tiki Room has its own set of restrooms inside the attraction. A rarity for an attraction, a common place for a restaurant. The other Adventureland portion of the Plaza Pavilion became the Tahitian Terrace in 1962, a seasonal restaurant themed to Samoa, Tahiti, and Hawaii. The restaurant served Polynesian-themed food, and guests watched a dinner show with Polynesian dancers, musicians, and a fire dancer, the Polynesian Review. Originally sponsored by Stouffer's, Kikoman took over as the sponsor in the 1980s. The sun set on Tahitian Terrace on April 17, 1993. The restaurant and dinner show were re-themed to the movie Aladdin and reopened as Aladdin's Oasis Dinner Show in July 1993, serving Americanized Middle Eastern food. Aladdin's Oasis Dinner Show was put back in the bottle in 1995. The space was then used for other purposes, but years later went back Back to being an eatery on December 21st, 2018 as Tropical Hideaway. Now let's move on to Fantasyland to another fan favorite. In the spot where Dumbo the Flying Elephant resides today, a Peter Pan themed Chicken of the Sea pirate ship and restaurant opened on August 29th, 1955, serving guests fare such as tuna sandwiches and tuna burgers. In 1969, Chicken of the Sea dropped their sponsorship and the name was changed to Captain Hook's Galley. In 1982, Fantasyland went under a major transformation. The pirate ship originally made of wood sat in the water for so long that it began to rot. So when it was removed to prepare for the new fantasy land, it was determined that this ship could not be saved. Rumor has it that the pirate boat was supposed to be moved to a location near It's a Small World, but the pirate boat was determined to not be able to withstand the move. In 1956, if you walked through Sleeping Beauty's castle and passed King Arthur's carousel, you would find the spinning teacups of the Mad Tea Party in front of you. Turn your head to the left and you would see Welch's Grape Juice Bar and the Mickey Mouse Club Theater, renamed the Fantasyland Theater in 1964, a movie theater that played Disney shorts and cartoons. After getting your Disney Disney cartoon fix, you could order a frozen juice bar or a grape juice at Welch's Juice Bar next door. A Fantasia-themed mural behind the counter would catch your eye. In the early days of Disneyland, it was not uncommon for the artists who worked on Disney films to also work on the park. Avon Earl, a background painter for Disney films in the 1950s, including Peter Pan and Sleeping Beauty, painted
created the mural that gave Welch's Juice Bar its Fantasia theme. Both the Fantasyland Theater and Welch's Juice Bar were closed in 1981 to make room for Pinocchio's Daring Journey and the Village Inn Quick Service Restaurant. Early Fantasyland had two food and beverage stands with the same menu, both called Character Foods. In much of the 1970s and early 1980s, the menu at Character Foods were themed to the 1973 animated Disney feature film Robin Hood. Hamburgers were Nottingham burgers, cheeseburgers were Canterbury burgers, and french fries were Northampton spuds. Disneyland has two attractions themed to Alice in Wonderland, the 1958 edition Alice in Wonderland and the opening day attraction Mad Tea Party, originally located behind King Arthur's Carousel. In the area where the Mad Tea Party currently is located used to be one of the character food locations. But when guests saw the new Fantasyland in 1983, they discovered that the character foods building was gone and the Mad Tea Party had been moved next to Alice in Wonderland and the Mad Hatter Shop, creating a cohesive Alice in Wonderland themed corner of Fantasyland. The other character food location was past the Fantasyland Theater near the Skyway Station and the original location of Dumbo. This character food's location only opened during peak seasons such as summer and holidays. Nearby, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad opened in Frontierland in 1979, creating a path called Big Thunder Trail that connected Frontierland to Fantasyland for the first time. This character food's location closed in 1979 to make room for the Fantasyland entrance of Big Thunder Trail. Moving on to Tomorrowland, the location of the Carousel Theater that used to house the attractions Carousel of Progress, America Sings, Inventions, and Star Wars Launch Bay used to be a restaurant, Stratosnack, a portmanteau, a stratosphere, and snack, which was later renamed Space Bar. This was an automat-style restaurant where guests selected their food out of vending machines. To make way for the Carousel of Progress as part of the new Tomorrowland, the Space Bar building was removed in 1967 and a new snack bar, which took over the name Space Bar, was installed on the ground floor below the People Mover Station and rocket jets. In spring 1977, about when Space Mountain blasted off for the first time, Space Bar changed its name to Lunching Pad, a play on words for a rocket's launching pad. It served hot dogs, ice cream, and other refreshments, including a drink called Space Mist, a personal favorite which I remember as tasting like bubblegum flavored punch. Lunching Pad Snack Mission was aborted in spring 1998 when the new New Tomorrowland opened. Rocket Rods took the place of People Mover, and the Radio Disney Broadcast booth took the place of Lunching Pad. When Disneyland Space Mountain opened in 1977, it was part of an entirely new complex. Beyond the roller coaster, the Space Mountain complex hosted live outdoor entertainment at the Space Stage, arcade games at the Starcade, and quick service food at Space Place. Hungry astronauts walked down a path between Mission to Mars and the Space Stage to access the Space Place, the most hidden restaurant in Disneyland. This restaurant only opened during peak seasons such as summer and holidays. Space Place not only served guests on stage, but also cast members at a hidden backstage window. Occasionally, I would order cottage fries there on my breaks during my shifts working Space Mountain. My second favorite attraction to work after Pirates. Space Place served pizza, hot dogs, burgers, salads, and ice cream. It closed down permanently by 1998 to make space for the Toy Story Funhouse. Space Place was never to reopen because in 1997, Space Mountain entrance speed ramp was removed and the area that housed Space Place was needed for a new entrance to Space Mountain. While Space Place is no longer serving food, some of the seating is still there to this day, serving guests who dine at Alien Pizza Planet, a restaurant which now occupies the building where attraction Mission to Mars lasted guests to the planet Mars until 1992, six and a half miles from Disneyland since 1934. Southern California tourists and locals alike have made Mrs. Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant the go-to spot for fried chicken. But did you know that Disneyland had its own chicken dinner restaurant during Disneyland's earliest years? The Chicken Plantation House. Swift & Company, a meat processing company, was responsible for both the Chicken Plantation House in Frontierland and the Red Wagon Inn on Main Street, which eventually became known as the Plaza Inn. Notice that today's corn dog stand next to the Plaza Inn 
is called the Little Red Wagon in honor of the former Red Wagon Inn. Guests entering Frontierland who headed down to the rivers of America and turned left would find Swift's Chicken Plantation House on the banks of the river where you find New Orleans Square today. The Chicken Plantation House closed down in January 1962 to make space for the 1966 opening of New Orleans Square. On the other side of Frontierland, years later, in 1986, Big Thunder Barbecue opened along Big Thunder Trail serving guests barbecue chicken and ribs outdoors from Chuck Wagon. It was hosted by Hunt's Ketchup and Barbecue Sauce through 1991. In 1998, it changed its theme during Festival of Fools to support the Hunchback of Notre Dame show next door. In 1998, it reverted back to Big Thunder Barbecue, but closed down in 2001. However, it did reopen in 2009 as Celebration Roundup and Barbecue. Ultimately, the barbecue restaurant closed in 2016 to make space for Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. On the other end of Big Thunder Trail, in 1998, Conestoga Fries opened across from Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. The food stand was a nod to the Conestoga Wagons attraction, which resided in Frontierland from August 1955 to September 1959. The slogan on the French fry wagon, Westward Ho, not only was the same as the painted slogan on one of the Conestoga wagons of the former Frontierland attraction, but also called back to a 1956 live action Disney film, Westward Ho the Wagons. Conestoga Fries closed in 2008 and was controversial amongst Disneyland fans. Some loved the convenience of a familiar tree, but others felt that nothing in Disneyland should remind you of the outside world. And to these fans, nothing reminded them more of the outside world than McDonald's. Which camp do you fall in? Let me know in the comments. A bit yonder in Frontierland, the wheelhouse served up milkshakes and soft serve ice cream during peak season, such as summers and holidays. It shared a seating area with Stage Door Cafe. The wheelhouse served its last ice cream in 1990. On to Bear Country. Beginning in 1972, when guests exited the Country Bear Jamboree, they passed by the Mile Long Bar, a snack bar with mirrors on each side of the bar, making it look like the bar was a mile long. Max, Buff, and Melvin hung out at the Mile Long Bar, where they may not have served alcohol, but you could belly up to a cold soda. When Splash Mountain opened in 1989, the Mile Long Bar was renamed Rare Bar, a nod to Brer Bear. The Country Bear's last performance was on September 9, 2001, to make way for the mini adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Consequently, Brer Bar closed down in 2002 to make space for Pooh Corner. Now to the heart of Disneyland in the hub. On August 18, 1956, the gazebo bandstand to the left of Sleeping Beauty's Castle was replaced with Carnation Plaza Gardens, a combined entertainment and dining area. The quick service food location served hamburgers and of course, Carnation ice cream. Typically character shows such as Fantasy Follies performed by day and big bands played by night. Carnation Plaza Gardens was the spot for dancing to music of a bygone era. It closed in October 1998, the end of an era. While the stage lives on as the Fantasy Fair Royal Theater, the eatery does not. On Main Street, upon entering Disneyland, the very first restaurant guests hungry for breakfast would encounter was located in Town Square. Although the restaurant was always focused on breakfast, the restaurant changed names and sponsors several times. It started as Maxwell House's Coffee House on December 1st, 1955. Then, Bill's Brothers Coffee House in 1958. Then, winter 1976, without a sponsor, it became Town Square Cafe. In in 1978, the American Egg Board became the sponsor and the name was changed again to American Egg House. Again, without a sponsor, the restaurant reverted back to the name Town Square Cafe in 1983 and lasted until 1992. The space eventually reopened as additional retail space. So these are the Disneyland eateries that aren't here anymore. Which Disneyland eatery do you miss? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, then you will love these videos about Disneyland history.